was made in Lake Orion as the inaugural game was played at the brand new Miracle League Field at Friendship Park. Oakland County mourned the loss of executive L. Brooks Patterson, who passed away on August 3rd at the age of 80 after a brief battle with pancreatic cancer. Kids had a hands-on experience with trucks of all shapes and sizes at Orion Township's annual Big Rig gig. And the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as hot rods and custom cars were on display during a charity car cruise benefiting the Kids and Cops program. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ONTV News. Approximately two years ago, the seed was planted to build an accessible ball diamond in Friendship Park. With community involvement, that seed grew into something beyond original expectations. And now the brand new Miracle League Field celebrated opening day. On the evening of Friday, August 9th, hundreds of spectators gathered at Friendship Park in Orion Township to witness history. After two years of planning and fundraising, Miracle League of North Oakland celebrated opening day with a ceremony on the field. Easter Seals Miracle League founder and director Steve Pack took to the pitcher's mound to welcome participants and visitors and to share the story of how the first Miracle League field in Southfield was built in 2004. I built the first field in Michigan back in 2004. It's called Easter Seals Miracle League of Michigan. It's in Southfield. And we have a very successful program there with 400 participants. They heard about what we did and uh, they wanted to come out and see it. Once they saw it, they're like, wow, we need to provide that opportunity in our community. So Chris Barnett was a great cheerleader and he said, Steve, how can we partner together? And uh, we, they just made a decision, let's, let's do it together. Instead of trying to do it alone, let's do it with an organization as in Easter Seals that has been there, done that. Several entities came together to make this day possible, including Orient Township, Independence Township, Easter Seals, and the Daisy Project. More than $400,000 was raised over the past two years. The idea came from the Lake Orion Whipple Ball Association of all groups. They're an amazing group of guys and girls. Uh, and then um, we were joined by the Daisy Project. And then I was driving to Lansing uh, for a meeting with uh, Independence Township Supervisor Pat Kittle. And he said, hey, we're building this amazing field. I said, we are too. So we said, let's collaborate. And they were already working with Easter Seals. So we teamed up with them. And then kind of since then, it's been a great, great partnership. And so it's not an Orient Township asset or field. It's not just for people living in Orient. Certainly our residents are going to use this and enjoy this field. But it's really for, that's why we call it the North Oakland. It's really for our region, Northern Oakland County, Lapeer, any place, anybody wants to come, we want them to come here and enjoy it. It was the Lake Orient Wiffle Ball Association who first pitched the idea of a new ball field at Friendship Park. Over the course of several fundraisers, the group donated $25,000 toward the construction of what we see today. A few years back, uh, we approached the township about building a field to kind of give back to the community. And uh, Aaron Watley and Chris Barnett had a great idea to partner with the DAISY Project about building an all-inclusive field. Um, and so that's kind of where the Lake Orion Football Association got on board. Um, and then it just grew into this amazing facility that I, I can't even believe um, really what it became. It's very, very impressive. Originally, the field was to be located at the north end of the park, but was moved to its current location to be near the other Bull Diamonds. The community came together for a groundbreaking ceremony on April 26th. The Bull Diamond is just the latest of several improvements designed to make the park more accessible to those with special needs. The DAISY Project hosts an annual concert called Ello Palooza that raises funds for these projects, including the Miracle League Field. Uh, amazing. I am utterly surprised. I'm so glad that the community came out to celebrate this. It's an amazing accomplishment. The community came together. We all did this together. It's about the kids, but it's also um, about the community and their donations. And we've been working hard towards this for some years now, so we're very thankful and I'm glad that everyone came out to celebrate today. During the opening day ceremony, Suzanne Baber was invited to throw out the first pitch. The 92-year-old widow lives near the park, and when she found out about the project, she delivered three separate checks for $10,000 each. Following the ceremony, players were introduced from the first two teams to play on the field, the Clarkston and Orion All-Stars. 
In the abbreviated inaugural game, every single player had a turn at the plate. As they rounded the bases, they didn't have to worry about barriers or obstacles. The field allowed all players to just focus on having fun. Overwhelmed, overjoyed, overtired, over everything. But uh, what an amazing night. I mean, one week ago today, there was nothing here. We were standing on asphalt. There were no fences, no dugouts, no field. And, uh, and we made it. Uh, but man, we had an amazing team. And it was all for what we just witnessed, to see these kids, the smile on their face, the joy, the parents crying. Um, the most rewarding project I've ever worked on in the, my, my entire pro professional career, for sure, this one. There's always uh, deep emotions when you give a player ability, a player that had been told no for so many times in their life. They wanted to play baseball. Most of our kids were born with their disability. So they would come home and say, hey, mom, can I play? And for far too long, moms have had to say, no, you can't. So the emotion is that of, it's actually joy. It's just the ability to give this gift. I mean, I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to work on this project. It's a once in a lifetime project for me and um, very humbling, so. The real credit goes to Chris. He, uh, Chris Barnett, he is, um, I, words can't explain how dedicated he is to this community and what a great supervisor, leader in general. Um, he works tirelessly for everyone. He's a giver. Um, so he really, he's really great at inspiring his team and the community to just want to give more and more. As you can tell, I mean, look at the field. And lastly, what are your emotions going on right now? Uh, just grateful, super, super excited, and uh, yeah, very humbled by it. So I want to, I'm, I'm thankful for everything. So these kids have never had this opportunity, and I think we needed to give that to them, and we we're able to do that. And uh, man, you see the joy and the ultimate ballpark experience. This is the best ballpark experience you're going to get any place in the region, and it's for the kids that deserve it the most. The evening came to an end just after sunset with an impressive fireworks display. What an amazing night. But the hard work and fundraising isn't quite over yet. Some finishing touches have yet to be done at Miracle Field, including landscaping, restrooms, and a concession stand that will be operated by staff with special needs. If you'd like to make a donation or for more information, visit easterseals.com slash Michigan or contact the Orion Township Supervisor's Office by calling 248-391-0304, extension 1001. We here at Owen TV were saddened by the news that longtime Oakland County Executive L. Brooks Patterson passed away on August 3rd at the age of 80. Patterson was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in March of 2019. After 16 years of serving as Oakland County Prosecutor, L. Brooks Patterson was first elected as Oakland County Executive in 1992 and took office on January 1st, 1993. In 2012, he was critically injured in a car crash in Auburn Hills and spent five weeks recovering in a hospital. He won re-election in 2016 to serve his seventh term in office. After being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in March, he announced that he would not seek re-election in 2020. In 2018, Patterson visited our Owen TV studio as a guest of the GoGop produced program On the Right Side, where he looked back at his career. If you told me 40 some years ago that I'd be working for Oakland County for all those years, I'd tell you you're crazy. Well, but, but once you get here, it's beautiful county, great people, and I've thoroughly enjoyed my career here. I worked for a, a gentleman in the prosecutor's office. And I, I rose very quickly through the ranks and became the chief trial lawyer in Oakland County uh, within my first year and a half. Uh, and I never lost a case, so I was effective and good at what I did. And one day the prosecutor called me and fired me. And I said, what are you firing me for? I never lost a case. I'm your chief trial lawyer. Well, he was a Democrat, and I was Republican. We're moving toward 1972, which was election year. Right. So he, he got a little nervous because I was winning everything and so forth. So he let me go, which was a mistake. Because as it turned out, the busing movement just began at that time, mm -hmm. became dominant in the news. You couldn't get away from it. Uh, I represented a group called the North Side Action Group in Pontiac, which evolved into NAG, the National Action Group. And the rest is history. I mean, here's Tom Plunkett right here, and here I am. I was on 
Walter Cronkite, all these national shows. Uh, but then when Judge Stephen Roth took the Pontiac plan and encompassed the whole Tri-County area in Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, then it hit the fan. And I was the only lawyer out there, so I got a lot of uh, exposure. Gerald Poisson was sworn in as acting county executive until the County Board of Commissioners appoints a successor or a special election is held. Poisson appointed Lori Van Pelt as the county's first female deputy county executive. We here at ONTV would like to express our condolences to the family and friends of L. Brooks Patterson. Throughout the summer, Galling Buick GMC hosts car shows that benefit local nonprofit organizations. Normally, they hold the shows at the dealership, but their August car show was a bit special. On Saturday, August 3rd, the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed off to traffic for the 2019 Kids and Cops Cruise In. More than 250 classic cars and hot rods were on display along Broadway and Flint streets. Organized by Galling Buick GMC, the annual event acts as a fundraiser benefiting the Lake Orion Police Association's Kids and Cops program at Blanche Sims Elementary School and the Shop with a Hero program. And what it does is supports the program that we do at Blanche Sims Elementary School. And we have a bunch of kids that come in on a Friday evening throughout the winter time. And they come in and uh, play games with us, play field hockey, basketball, tug of war, mainly trying to get to know the officers as a person, not as an officer, so they can approach us, that type of thing. So this is supporting our, our charity of that aspect. This was the third cruise in organized by Galling Butte GMC. Events in May and June were held at the dealership. The Kids and Cops Cruise In takes place in downtown Lake Orion and benefits from all the perks the downtown area has to offer, including a pancake breakfast fundraiser hosted by Lockhart's Barbecue. Downtown is the downtown. This is the gem of the community, and um, we're, the village is proud of our downtown. And so how much better to have our car show on the streets downtown where we can support our merchants. There's a lot of sizzling summer sales at our merchants and restaurants today, so you can't go hungry if you come down and look at the uh, cars today. It's, it's going to be 85 degrees and sunny all day. It's, it's going to be a perfect day to shop downtown, see the cars. Uh, a shout out to Lockhart's Barbecue. Our partners and friends uh, at Lockhart's are serving up a pancake breakfast this morning from 8 to I believe 10.30, could be 11. And all of the proceeds today from the car entries and the pancake breakfast go to support our Kids and Cops programs, both at Blant Sims, our Shop of the Hero program, uh, our youth sports activities where we sponsor kids for uh, all types of sports throughout the summer. These are all Orient kids and families. So 100% of these dollars go back into our community. Galling does a lot of it. Uh, if it wasn't for Galling, we wouldn't be able to get this fully uh, promoted, uh, supported, and everything else. But Galling is a very big sponsor of what we do. If you miss the car cruise, you can still make a donation to benefit the Kids and Cops program and Shop with a Hero. Just mail or drop off your donation at the police department located at 25 East Church Street in Lake Orion. Galling's final car cruise of the season is scheduled for Saturday, September 14th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Throughout the year, Orion Township Parks and Rec offers a wide variety of events for the whole family to enjoy. Recently, they held an event geared toward young ones and the young at heart. On Friday, August 2nd, approximately three dozen trucks and vehicles were scattered across the grounds of Friendship Park for the 16th annual Big Rig Gig. Perfect weather, free admission, and plenty of photo ops resulted in quite possibly the largest turnout ever for the event. It's absolutely perfect. It's warm, it's sunny, it's not too warm, it's not muggy, it's beautiful out. Doesn't cost anything this year. This is one of our thank yous to the Orion Township voters for passing the millage. So to get into the Big Rig gig this year, it is zip, zero, zilt, nada, doesn't cost a penny to get in for all of the fun and memories that you will have for a lifetime. Vehicles included everything from a cement mixer to a school bus. The Road Commission for Oakland County provided several vehicles and the Sheriff's Office had a few emergency vehicles on hand. There was a play area and several food trucks offered families a quick bite. You know what's really interesting is I was talking to one of the drivers and um, he said it was really a tradition with his family. Every year, they since their kids have been toddlers and they're now older teenagers, every year they come out, every year they come to the Big Rig gig and they've seen it grow every year. And it, it's so neat to me that it has become a family tradition for them. Of course, the township and village had several emergency vehicles in the park, including a couple of fire trucks that provided great photo opportunities for the little ones. 
the event is, is probably the, the best thing we can do all year. This is one of the best uh, events the township puts on and it brings thousands of, of, of people here and we have just been so grateful. The fire chief has allowed us to bring in multiple apparatus here and it's just the best part engaging with the, the community in, in an area that's not an emergency, that we can really interact with them and, and see them uh, kind of happy and exploring the fire trucks. kind of the best way to, to do it. Next up on the calendar is a brand new event. The Fall Festival of Family Fun is scheduled to take place on Saturday, September 28th at Camp Agawam. For more information, you can call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. Crossroads for Youth, formerly known as Camp Oakland, has been providing a safe environment for young people for more than 65 years. When it was determined that one of the dorms on the campus was in dire need of repairs, the community came together to make it happen. On Thursday, August 1st, Northern Flooring and Interiors in Lake Orion hosted a Luau by the Lake fundraiser to benefit the Mattis House at Crossroads for Youth. Over 100 attendees enjoyed a pig roast, a tiki bar, music, and games. A silent auction offered over $14,000 in items donated by the community. This is the fifth year Northern Flooring has partnered with Design for a Difference to tackle a community project. Okay, so Design for a Difference is a national movement. Um, and uh, so uh, our store, along with about 70 other stores across North America, partnered to create this charity along with our celebrity, uh, or our designer uh, spokesperson, Mark Burnett. And the idea was to help charities because most charities are so busy taking care of their patients or clients or uh, the people they serve that they don't have uh, uh, the ability to necessarily take care of their own facilities. So Design for a Difference purpose was to bring design, because that's uh, what, what, what we like to focus on, to these charities and make their spaces more functional, more pleasant, so they can better serve their, their clients and the employees themselves can be in a better spot. So that's where it came from. Now we're over five million dollars in charity, um, in uh, makeovers across the country. Chris Vile has been with Crossroads for Youth over 24 years, 18 as the clinical director. He told us what the fundraiser means to those who stay at Crossroads for Youth. Oh, this is a fantastic event. We are in the process of renovating one of our older buildings and turning it into a state-of-the-art, modern, single floor facility for our young ladies that are that are currently on campus right now they currently live in a building that was built in like 1962 it's a two-story building and and it's not a, it's not conducive for the kind of environment that provides the best healing environment for them and we do a really good job of doing that for them but the building could be a lot better and so this project is going to just provide them with an absolute state-of-the-art healing environment on a beautiful grounds at Crossroads for Youth. Two of Crossroads' earliest residents were at the event and shared how the program affected their lives. I lived on the streets. I lived in Detroit. I panhandled when I was about six, seven. I lived in dog houses. People laugh about it today. Then the courts took me over and they wouldn't send me home again, Judge Moore. So to me, that straightened me out. I could have been in bad trouble today. I became very successful because of Camp Oakland, Crossroads, you could call it, they do today. Kathy Sherman Bittrick stayed at Crossroads in 1961 through 1965 and wrote a book about her experiences. I think what always amazed me was the generosity of the people that cared about kids. I mean, it still chokes me up because um, when I look back at people who didn't have to do anything and yet they were there at Christmas to make sure we had gifts uh, one of the donors took me up to Ferris to make sure I got into college. Um, it taught me to give back. We just did a fundraiser up at Mona Lake where I'm from. I lived in Muskegon. We just did a fundraiser two weeks ago over there. And so I think when, um, when you're raised with the generosity of people that care about you and believe in you, it's just natural that you're going to be an achiever and you're going to give back and that's what we do. If you missed the event, it's not too late to donate. You can drop a check off at Northern Flooring made out to Crossroads for Youth and mention Mattis House in the memo. The goal is to have the renovations completed mid-September. The staff at the Orion Township Public Library stresses the importance of encouraging your little ones to read throughout the summer. One way to do that is to give them a chance to win fun prizes. On the afternoon of Saturday, August 3rd, the Orion Township Public Library celebrated the end of the summer reading program with a huge finale party. 
The theme of this year's program was a universe of stories and incorporated a space theme. The program kicked off on June 8th with a big bash on the grounds of the library and drew hundreds of participants. Yeah, we had over 700 participants this year, um, 500 and some in the elementary age range and 150 in preschool, zero to five. And then we also, uh, we had a community goal of reading to the moon. So this year um, we took the miles to the moon, so 238,000 miles to the moon, and we tried to read that many number of minutes. And they did, they read 250,000. Numerous prizes were handed out at the finale. Participants were encouraged to read throughout the summer to keep their skills sharp as they prepare to return to school in September. Obviously, um, summer slide is a real thing. So um, throughout the summer, because there's no school, kids often um, slip down a little bit in their learning. So when they come back, they're a little bit behind. So we encourage reading throughout the summer and providing a program like this and prizes are really simple, easy, fun incentives to get them to continue reading throughout the summer. Providing the entertainment at the finale was an acrobatic team from Cirque Among Us, an organization that encourages people to learn circus arts. They are a local group. They're based out of Livonia. They are Cirque Among Us. They do um, performances all around for library, schools, other, any youth group. They may want them. Um, a lot of variety, uh, unicycles and juggling and a really cool hoop show too. For more information about upcoming library programs and services, you can call 248. 693-3000 or visit orionlibrary.org. The Orion Veterans Memorial has evolved to become more than just a place to hold solemn ceremonies. Over the years, it's become a location for the community to gather and socialize. On Saturday, August 3rd, the Lake Orion community was invited to visit the Orion Veterans Memorial to have coffee with a veteran. It was an opportunity to see the numerous monuments located on the grounds and to meet with those who served our country. We've got, we've got a couple of uh, representatives of World War II who are over 90 years old. Of course, uh, Vietnam and Korea, and uh, we're all sharing stories throughout. And we have some young men from Afghanistan and uh, Iraq. Speakers were invited to address the crowd in attendance, including representatives of the American Legion writers from Post 108 in Oxford. I'm a Patriot Guard rider, but on my back you're going to see a American Legion rider's patch, which is what I wear. The Patriot Guard riders were founded in 2005 from the Legion riders, and they were founded to shield families from those who would disrupt the services. Back in that time, we had the Westboro Baptist Church that used to show up at military funerals to embarrass the family and, and make a lot of disruption. So the Patriot Guard riders would step in and shield the family from those people, mainly by the flag line, uh, noisy bikes if necessary, that kind of thing. But they kept them at a distance where they didn't disrupt the funeral. For me, it's just, it's friendship. Um, for me, I like to support them. I like to be around them. They're my, they're my friends. So to hear the jokes and the laughs between each other, it's just a good time. So. I guess my message for my age group is get out, get around these guys. They're good people and uh, there are lots of laughs and I, I just love being around these guys. I can, I do it as much as I can. This is, this is what I do for my free time is be around these guys. Also speaking was Joanne Kotcher who talked about her time in Vietnam as a member of the Red Cross, also known as Donut Dollies. Donut Dolly was a nickname that the soldiers gave to the Red Cross girls in World War II because they were so excited to see an American girl. And the Red Cross had donuts they gave out to, to people. And when they showed up someplace, the cry went out all over, Donut Dollies are here. Everybody would flock to get a donut from an American girl. So what does it mean to be able to come down here and talk to the veterans and the visitors here at this memorial? I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to see this wonderful memorial that everyone is so friendly and, and so remembers those who went before and gave us our freedoms. And, and in past years when this wasn't fashionable, you wouldn't see anything like this. I'm so glad to see it now. 
The next major event scheduled to take place at the Orion Veterans Memorial is the Patriot Day Ceremony on Wednesday, September 11th, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Veterans and first responders will come together to remember those who lost their lives 18 years ago. Well, it's hard to believe, but the high school football season is right around the corner. In a relatively new tradition, the Oakland Activities Association invites members of the media to meet with local coaches and players to generate some excitement for the upcoming season. We sent ONTV's Sammy Termina to Rochester High School for the event. On Friday, August 9th, Rochester High School is once again the site of the Oakland Activities Association's Football Media Day. Rochester head coach Eric Vernon welcomed those in attendance. Coaches and players representing 20 of the 21 teams that make up the OA were invited to come up to the podium to talk about their expectations for the 2019 varsity football season. I caught up with some of the coaches that make up the OA Red Division, which includes the Lake Orion Dragons. I got Lake Orion football coach John Blackstock here. Um, one thing that is very interesting when you look at the stats, um, 21 and 26 since 2014, how do you address that? Uh, just through hard work. You know, and uh, and trying to get better fundamentally. Uh, done a lot of a lot of work in the off season as coaches in terms of fundamental skill and research and technique and scheme and uh, and feel like we're on a really good path. I got Bloomfield Hills coach Dan Loria here. When you look at the state of the Blackhawks, last season was kind of a rough year for you guys. Two and seven a year ago. Um, what have you guys done this off season to try to change the curve? I think it's more on, on what they've done. Um, this group has been committed since the very beginning. When the season ended, our underclassmen, you know, we took a couple weeks off, we got into it, and they just never really quit. You know, you always worry about, hey, we're getting near the end of the school year, and now we got to carry that same momentum into the summer, and they've done that. And they always look forward, like I said up there, they look forward, you know, we got a condition tonight, and they look forward to doing that stuff. They like being together. Frankly, I like being around them because they're just, they're good kids that you know are going to play hard. And I always say, hey, I can go to bed at night. If I know these guys are going to play, give us all they have, what happens happens from that point forward. Talk about the um, Highlanders of Rochester Adams. Well, you know, last year we made some mistakes early and we got together down the stretch and won three, games, three big games in the road to get into the playoffs. And I hope that we can build on that from last year. Um, our top offensive players in terms of Carter Ferris and Anthony Petrito are back. They're our number one producers in terms of 20 touchdowns as, as juniors, which is good. The Anderson Twins, you saw them up there, they're multiple sport athletes. They're tough, old school Adams kind of kids. Uh, but we know in the OA Red, there's not an off week, and you make one mistake, you're going to get whooped. So we're going to try to get ready and play every week. Talk about the expectation of the Lakers this year, of course. A lot of expectations, senior experience. What's the key for you guys? Well, the key is getting through the schedule. I mean, we, we have great expectations uh, for ourselves because we know we think we have some pretty good players and some pretty good leaders. But, uh, you know, when you look at the schedule, you, you Oak Park and Groves and Southfield, Clarkson, Orion as the first five games, I mean, there's no weeks off in there, so our expectation is to play hard in a couple weeks against Oak Park and kind of take it from there. You guys out there, the football players, you played the greatest game ever. The greatest game ever. And guys, if we get to coach you, that's awesome. That's phenomenal. I've been doing it for a while, and we're the luckiest guys in the world, and you young men play the greatest game in the world. The season kicks off on Thursday, August the 28th with Oak Park taking on West Bloomfield as the uh, marquee matchup around the league. Lake Orion opens up their season on Thursday the 28th as they travel to Lapeer to take on the Lightning at 7 p.m. From Rochester High School, Sammy Termina, ONTV News. Thanks, Sammy. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.